Welcome, everybody, to another episode of The Great Mistake. I am your host, Graham Rogers. And with me, as always, our fearless band leader. Totally unauthorized to be here, but, you know, we had to sneak him in through the back door, Mr. Gerard Bauer. Welcome, everyone. And as you know, it is my duty to listen to Graham and give him good advice. Uh, At the same time, I silently judge him. And those silent judgments, you know, sometimes even though you think they're quiet, I can hear them, you know, because I'm used to like picking up on social and facial cues. You know, you raise an eyebrow, you know, you're kind of your neck twitches a little bit. I know what you're doing dude. you're sitting on that throne quietly judging, but that's OK, because um, when that happens, you know, I, I take that judgment, mold it into a nice little shield and I fight I defend myself I don't fight back you know the other day I'm hanging out in a in a building in a lobby of a building okay it's not a nice lobby it's a lobby lobby one couch a rug some walls and three doors and this girl we'll just call her V like the letter like the roman numeral v v v call her five we'll call her five so i'm sitting on the couch waiting hanging out looking up reddit stuff looking up my own stand-up comedy checking your google rankings yeah checking just checking myself out i've had a long day this is my time to unwind and relax. Let's see what the internet is saying about Graham. And it's not a lot, but that's okay. You know what the purpose of it was, was just to kind of catch a, just to kind of catch a feel of how and where I stood on the internet. But you know, you can't really search the web without what Gerard? Taking a puff of the vape pen. Oh. Taking a Puff of the vape pen. Puffing and scrolling, baby. You know, so dude, I'm hitting that smock novo life. It's that purple. Dude, the flavor is purple. So I'm dude, I'm just hitting the vape pen. Not 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 crazy all, you know, I'm just I'm just hitting it nice and respectfully hitting that vape pen. And V, this girl V, comes up and she goes, dude. She she talks like, um, she talks like a bro. Dude. Bruh. Bruh. D- dude. Ha- dude. Dude, have you, have you heard that uh, uh, people are dying from vaping? I said, you damn right. But yeah. you know what? The misconception is our people are dying from that bunk THC cartridges. That aftermarket yeah. pot. Yeah, we all know this. Yeah, but, but, but V, I almost said her name because I'm just so riled up. Five. Five was, you know, she hadn't done her research. She just sees the signs on the road and she just thinks that I'm killing people and killing myself. So I do have to say that now that people can die from vaping, it's kind of made it a little bit cooler. Right? Absolutely. She says, Graham, first, first of all, she condones. She, she's like, you shouldn't be doing this. And she goes, secondly, uh oh. I don't want to be a part of of what you're blowing out of your mouth. Okay, and I don't know if if the you the viewers know anything about lobbies, but lobbies historically have been a place of just all everything goes. Oh yeah, it's like international waters out there. Oh, dude, in a lobby, you can have you can have children. Yep. Dude, in a lobby, you can you can fight cats in a lobby. Human trafficking, totally cool in a lobby. Dude, a lobby is a place where where all your deepest and darkest and most fanatical thoughts can can come to fruition, and that's a great thing. But you know, V or Five, she didn't know about the rules of lobby engagement. Mm-hmm. So she's trying to what? She's trying to put a stop on my. Freedom as a as a, as an adult. You know what you need in that case to help you out, man. A Glock. No, a lobbyist. 
Damn. That's what lobbyists get paid for, man. I think I maybe saw one, but he was wearing Skechers and I didn't trust him that much. So I'm like, you know what? I don't really care. You know, a part of this podcast, part of this experience on earth is sticking up for yourself. You know, we're talking earlier, quiet judgment. When that judgment comes, you got to build that shield. So I was like, you know, I don't really care. She proceeds, she proceeds to lay down supine. She laid down on the floor and and in protest of my vaping. She had a die in. Is that what that's called? Is like when people pretend to die to protest to be like, hey, oh, this many people are dying, so pay attention. Yeah, but she was a she was a hot girl, and so she was doing it for attention, so, and also to make me feel. Honestly, she was just doing it so that I would like see her on the ground like that. That just got me thinking about protesting and about you know some protests are good but some some of this some of these things that have been going on you know protesting sugar there was a protest up in portland because some group some activists didn't feel like they were getting enough sunshine so they actually had a, yeah. they signed a petition against rain clouds you know and i just feel like rain rain go away come on get some other day I was at a a coffee shop, and in LA, coffee shops are where people write um, scripts that will never be read. So I'm at this coffee shop, and I get a cold brew. Mm-hmm. And cold brew is when you want that sudden jolt of coffee without sweating. It's icy. It's cold. It's brewed. So the guy gives me a to-go cup, and then. I was like, can I get a straw? Uh And he goes, Uh yeah. And then he literally, he's like, but we got to keep the straws behind the counter now. Fuck yeah, they do, man. He had to, dude, he had to use a freaking key to unlock the straw box. He had to unlock the straw. I felt like I was buying, I thought, I felt like I was underage kid, you know, buying alcohol. Or buying whippets. Oh, yeah, or buying you know, freaking exported pasta, you know, or kudzu. I, f- I feel like I was bringing, like I was buying an illegal plant f- from a botanical garden. But, and then I look in the cup. The cup is plastic. The lid is plastic. But the straws are what we're worried about. You know, what they should do, honestly, if they really want a solution to the straw problem, um, let's keep the straws out and then let's do something about what we put the liquid in. Yeah. I don't know. Pour it in my hand. Yeah. Uh, give me a, what about a public ladle where you kind of ladle, they give you a spoon, like a nice copper spoon and you ladle it or you can sip it out of the ladle. A uh, coffee fountain. Just coffee like, fountain. Just like, here, put a quarter in and you can use this coffee fountain. Drink a couple sips. That's a genius idea. Maybe like an MRI kind of style machine where you, they put you in the tube, right? And then you pick your drink and then you just open your mouth. That's and beautiful. And then you're lying down and they just have a squirter that comes in and squirts what you wanted to drink in your mouth and then you move out on a conveyor belt. But you know people would abuse that privilege and they would start, you know, taking up substances in the butt and other, probably other orifices. Oh yeah, you just turn around and put your butthole up to the spigot Yep. when nobody's looking. And then you just down a Diet Dr. Pepper right there. What is that called? It's called um, oh, coffee enemas. But there's like a cool kid name for it. But Oh, butt, butt chugging. Butt, chug, butt, butt chugging. chugging. Dude, 100% butt chugging. Dude, we should, that's what we need to open up a butt chugging cafe where you can, because people only butt, think about butt chugging like beer, but dude, I'm talking about, bre- dude, go to breakfast, get a burrito and I'll win you butt chug orange juice. Come down to butt chug cafe. We're open from five to eight at butt chug cafe. Cha
Bug Cafe. And do, not anyone can just go to the Butt Chug Cafe. First of all, if you got to bring a receipt of your most um, recent STD test, because mm, that's interesting. That's because very important. Very important at the, S- the health code. At, at the cafe, they don't replace their nozzles every after every use. Okay. Oh, you couldn't. You couldn't. So it's they they they, they do it like every hour, but chug. You have to be at least semi clean. Um, with that's, a cer- a, that's a job for a service animal right there. Because I mean, a dog could figure out how dirty your ass is pretty easily. Yeah, and dogs are way underployed right now. Yeah. There's- but one of my friends actually had one of those coffee enemas, and he said, no joke, it was like the best thing he's ever done. And, you <laughs> the know. The best thing and he's as ever some, done. Yeah, and as someone who is who is always looking for the next... Gerard, I'm I'm always looking for that perfect combination of things to make me feel good. So like you know, like whatever it is, a little coffee, a little you know, a vita B vitamin, like a, a couple breaths in here, a couple you know, maybe I'll do a push up or two just to get that nice little mixture of cough of 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 feeling good. But I have a feeling that if I tried to do the um, the coffee enema, I feel like I would get addicted right away, and then I would have to start a new twelve step program. Yeah, the twelve step, the twelve step steps for um, for coffee enemas. And My name's Graham, and I'm a butt chugaholic. I'm a butt chugaholic. <laughs> we live in such a trend based culture, you know. Now, like people like butts. It wasn't always like that. Yeah. People didn't always used to like big booties. Yeah, but and now- sticking things up big booties yeah it's like a new eating ass yeah that was never a thing you know the only time you ate ass was like when you fell like when you ate ass was like when you 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 fell on your face on your face or you smacked your head on the door or like you made a fool of yourself that was when i was growing up that was eating ass but now eating ass is eating and that's some crazy stuff. I can't say that I don't not not like it, but you know, it's definitely it's definitely was not it's definitely a generational thing. You know, in high school, yeah, I don't think anyone ate ass. But I think it is you're always looking for that next thing that you can brag that you did that next or thrill. had done to you, because you know, sex is what your parents have. Yeah, and parents are lame. Lame. So you gotta come up with something else. Eating ass is what uh, what millennials. Yeah, millennials do. And generation. What's the what's what's the new generation? Y X. I guess. Yeah. I I kind of. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. It's it's okay. Eating ass is alright. I've been whipping around that new that new new. I've been whipping around town in that new, new. I'm talking about that carefree car. You know I got that car. You know I got two set of spare keys. Ooh. I got two sets of spare keys. Guess what? Keep them in the same place. Why not live life on the edge? If I can't get to one, I'm not getting to any. See ya. Yeah, it's good to challenge yourself every day. Every day try to make something a little bit harder make it make sure that if you fail you fail you fail hard make sure that if you fail you land on your ass you eat that ass and then you eat it and you enjoy it but dude yeah i've been i've been i've just been so i've been all over the place with them with the car just free gram man free wheeling i got the volvo which means that you know, pretty soon I'll have to be a dad. Yeah, it's got great safety ratings. It's great safety. Do you Dude. tell do you tell girls when they get into that thing how safe it is? Uh, you know, they they the thing about the Volvo is you don't even have to tell them. They just know. All of a sudden, you get in a Volvo, and you know, you kind of have those. You have big dad forearms and dad legs, and. Yeah. You know, but the weird thing is, is that when I bought the Volvo, dude, the only way that um, they would finance me is if I, if is if I had to show proof of conception. Yeah. I so in three months I have to show proof of conception, and then it has to be in the Volvo, and it also has to be filmed. Which is difficult because when you're in such a safe vehicle like a Volvo, it's, it's like you don't 
wear a condom because it's that's how safe the vehicle is. You don't even need to wear. You don't need to wear a condom. So it's hard to actually conceive in a Volvo for yeah. that reason. And there's only one position, and that's missionary. You, there's nothing crazy that goes on there. It's like almost you kind of yeah. Not all the clothes go off. It's like a very transactional, um, yeah. very mature way of having sex. Keep your shirt on. on. Keep oh yeah, shirts are on. Pants are just pulled down a little bit just so that you don't tell you uh, shoes get exposed. probably still on. Oh yeah, of course you don't like, you don't take shoes off in the Volvo, dude. Come on. Have you ever heard the expression? Uh, trust someone as far as you can throw them. Mm. What does it make you think of, though? It makes me think about. Um, we used to have this friend named Barrett Ford. You know how some dudes are just like, um, even though they're not really big, they just have like a bunch of dead weight on them. And yeah. I'm just thinking because I trusted Barrett Ford. He was a good guy, but he just had like a bunch of like dead weight on him. Like he had like big bones. He's just like a big dude. He actually no, he wasn't big. He just like was just he just had so much mass hidden somewhere in his body. You couldn't trust him for that I, reason, right? I because well, they're like, what are you hiding? Where are you hiding all this mass? Yeah, there was always something that was weird about him. Like he there was it didn't add up. Bear was a guy that came up to my house one one night and I used to throw these crazy parties in high school and just completely against my parents' um, permission. And I would do them anyway because I was rebellious. And Barrett was at a party one time and um and he was just like chugging Jaegermeister. And um, you know how like in in high school parties you, you kind of blink and then there's like a new like a new scene. It's like it was very movie esque. And then so literally I see Barrett on one, in one scene drinking Jägermeister, and then I see him in the next scene he's um, he's shirtless on the trampoline, passed out. And um, this guy was like grab a sharpie and somehow a sharpie just emerged, you know. And then of course they started drawing dicks on him and they started balancing on the trampoline no regard for human life when you're that young you know you just think it's hilarious that this oh, guy he, he, he looked like a big baby um and then we moved him out to like the side like you know and he was like <laughs> and then dude we just hear <laughs> the dude while he's passed out poops and shits his pants okay so we're like this is disgusting but this is also our fault and at this point the party's clearing out and there's a legitimate concern that Barrett has alcohol poisoning and he potentially could die. Yeah. That's what's running through my mind. I'm like, I'm Pants like, shitting is a bad sign. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, Oh, I was like, what was running through my mind? It's like, Oh man, I'm, I'm a huge asshole. I, cause the whole time my mom's like, Graham, these kids are uncontrollable. I'm like, mom, you don't even, you don't know. We're fine. You know, like just be the biggest piece of shit. And then this happens. So then, then I'm like, oh my gosh, if Barrett has, if Barrett, something happens to Barrett, it's our responsibility. So then my little 16 year old um, thinking says, okay, well, if Barrett's going to die, he can't be on our property. That, that, and so we're like, let's just move him to the street. So smart, if, if he dies, it's like smart. public domain. Dude, are you sure you're not a lawyer? I'm pretty fucking sure, dude. You can look at my um, bank account information and it will verify that very quickly. So we moved Barrett out just so that he's off our property, okay? And then before that, though, we were like, he shit his pants. We got to, he can't, he can't just lay in his own filth. So we take scissors and we cut his pants off, okay? Cut his pants off. So now this guy is naked. It's getting good now. Yeah, this guy is pretty much naked. He has dicks. His shirt's off. He has dicks. I think he's just wearing, like, I, I don't know why we thought that was a good idea. Just take it, because it's like, his, then his pants were just, his, he, he's wearing, like, underwear. You know, they still were poop underwear. So this guy who's just a big baby as it is now looks even more like a big baby with dicks drawn over him and shit in his pants literally it's all coming together so we're like okay we gotta get Barrett back to his house um because he can't be here so my friend um you know there's a few people at the party who are who are sober and um we took Barrett back to his house and we cradled him up to the door like a little baby and then we 
gently set him down and we rang the doorbell like four times and we ran back to the car. So Barrett's mom at like one in the morning wakes up and sees her child with just dick all over him with shitty pants and she just like wrapped him and took him inside. I'm like, damn, that's love. But also how disappointed would you be as a parent? You're like, that's what I, that's what I push through my vagina, this thing. Well, brings her back to when she had, got to change him Probably as a baby. So. You know, it's like that weird, like, oh, I get to be a mom again. But maybe she was pissed about being a mom, so I don't know. I don't think she minded it at all. I think she felt sorry for, for him. But, yeah, when you say, um, the, the, how far can you trust somebody with that weighs a lot that's yeah well yeah it does beg the question of well doesn't that mean like a little person or a child is the most trustworthy absolutely not do little people for the most part are very untrustworthy you think so absolutely dude i wouldn't trust a kid with a secret i wouldn't trust i would i wouldn't trust um a baby at all for anything. you can throw those fuckers far yeah yeah so i think that logic kind of goes goes out you know? i agree i trust a, a a guy who's well built a guy who maybe has you know a, has some maybe some even extra pounds on him honestly fat guys are way more trustworthy way more trust actually now that i think about it fat guys also can i know a lot of you know nope no no medium dudes I feel like medium the, people are the, the most trustworthy the dad bod is indicative of trustworthiness like in shape so you're not lazy mm-hmm. but definitely not the kind of guy who gets to go to the gym or gets to watch what he eats like that dad bod yeah yeah that's the most trustworthy that's yes that's the most trustworthy because a lot of a lot of fat dudes will rat you out on the girls that they want to they'll talk shit behind your back because they want to sleep with the girls there's one guy in particular that i'm thinking of right now who will who will literally turn on you he's a fat guy he's been fat all his life he has a chip on his shoulder and dude this guy will sell you out so fast to a girl that would never even fuck him it's fucked up now with girls that's the opposite. I think heavier heavier women are very trustworthy. I think skinny bitches are not. And I think yeah. moms, girls with mom bods, are very trustworthy. Yeah, I was just going to say that because I uh, like to walk in the morning at this park, uh, Kenneth Hahn, which is in, our, in here in L.A. Mm-hmm. And at that time I go, it's just like a lot of moms, like older moms, like 40 to 50, middle-aged moms, mm-hmm. you know, kids probably pretty old. But it's so, there's just a calm energy coming off of them. And when we stop and chat, it's just like very, oh, yeah. it feels so good. It's like just that mom I, I energy. Lo- oh, it's so good. Especially like just having like those interactions with people that are also like, you know, going on hikes or going to a mm-hmm. park. And they're just like happy just to hang out and to like on a on an afternoon that's beautiful you know there's people that are nice and people that are enjoying themselves i'm really stoked about that i think middle-aged women are extremely trustworthy and i think they're um but you can't throw them very far because they're also they they're solid yeah they're so solid they got got some mom muscles yeah and also like you you don't want to hurt you don't want to hurt a hurt a mom you couldn't even throw them. You just be like, I'd gently set them down. Yeah, like very, yeah, like on like a nice padded chair or something like that. Yeah. Put, let them put their feet up. They've they've earned it. They have earned it so much. Um, yeah. So most uh, most untrustworthy is super skinny small dude and fat dude. Very untrustworthy. Medium dad bod we discovered is, is very trustworthy. And then for girls, bigger girls, very trustworthy. Skinny bitches, not trustworthy. Yeah, because I see also skinny ladies running around that same park, and I'm like... The whole yeah, different energy, right? Yeah, yeah, you're just like, oof, like, I'm scared. And then, like, I f- yeah, um, there's a term called orthorexia, and orthorexia is ad- the addiction to being healthy, and I feel like there's a lot of people here that it's almost like an eating disorder where they have to be so 
up on health and fitness that they and even though they look good like they're not mentally they're a wreck because like they may get like an hour of like escape a day or like maybe they're just at the gym all day long because they don't want to face their problems right right yeah but orthorexia is a real thing dude out here it's they're like, on this quest of constant self-improvement because they hate themselves. A lot, like a lot of times when you go through a, a breakup, um, I, you can go one of two ways. One is you can go like the Domino's pizza and beer and nacho, like that kind of route where you just mm-hmm. eat your feelings. And then the other way would be the orthorexic way in which you want to be in the best shape of your life so that at least outwardly you appear uh, desirable, yeah. right? And that's the way when I went through that breakup a few, like a few years ago, I was extremely, extremely, I was orthorexic in a way that like, even though I was like the most healthy I've ever been, mentally, I, it was the worst I've, place I've ever been in my life. But on the outside, I had six pack. It's, I all was, about, um, it's all about hurting yourself and punishing yourself. Both people are punishing themselves. Big time. And I was, I was punishing myself so bad, but it was the only like I would wake up I couldn't sleep I would wake up like 5 in the morning do a 2 hour workout go to work and then go back for another like 2 hour workout and eat like just like cans of tuna all day I thought I was always going to be depressed I thought I was never going to experience love or happiness ever again and I remember how real those feelings were and being like and and literally thinking that my entire life is going to be dictated on this one experience because when you're in that state you have tunnel vision and you cannot see your way out absolutely there's little glimpses of 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 light but they're always shrouded heavily shrouded with darkness after my last breakup you know what i did Hmm. i joined an improv class wow that's the most breakup thing ever and guess what happened? You found the uh, love of your life. And I met my wife too, Graham. I met you and my wife. Yeah. Dude, that's special. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? That's crazy. Yeah, dude. Going, um, that, that is the most breakup y thing to do is join an improv class after it, a breakup. And it worked. I mean, what a great way to, yeah, what a great way to, I mean, you're around people, you're being creative. Right. Doing and something challenging yourself. Yeah, challenging expanding yourself. Expanding your social network. You, you, it makes you get out of the house. Right. It, yeah, yeah. Um, and at one point, I was doing it like three nights a week. Of course. Yeah, I'm sh- because you needed it. Yeah. And also because it's probably like you were sad. I was and, with Alex too. She was on. Yeah. The, she was on the team with me. Well, that's, Alex is a good reason to to pick up a few extra nights of improv. You yeah. know. Um, yeah, that's that's crazy though. How that is what led you to do improv. I would never have met you. Yeah, and it was all thanks to super random connection of a friend I met in the comedy world who had moved here from Minnesota. But while he was in Minnesota, he dated a girl who also moved out to LA and dated my brother. Really? So very random connection. Wow. And every once in a while, he hits me up to do something. And one time he hit me up to come to see his improv show. And it was at Westside. Mm-hmm. I was with my girlfriend at the time. And I said, you know what? I think I want to take these classes sometime. Really? And my girlfriend goes, oh my God, that's crazy. You want to do that? And I said, yeah, I do. And you're like, by the way, we're breaking up. And I said, we're breaking up right now so I can join. <laughs> and on that note... I want to leave you on a very important message. It's one from my heart. Deep down into the to the soul waves of my lower extremities. You know, success is not built on success. It's built on mistakes, catastrophes, shit shows. So as I part, let your next mistake be the great mistake that brings you closer to your dreams. And also, something that is very 
true and dear to my heart is, um, I don't know, leaving a five-star review. If you like it, leave a five-star review. Tell a friend. Um, Tell your boss. And then you'll get a raise because your boss is like, yeah. "Damn, I like I like that podcast. Good recommendation." Yeah. If you if you if you if you recommend this, you'll get more money. Yeah. That's a guarantee. That's a guarantee. You you get a raise if you recommend this this podcast. That's the Graham Rogers guarantee. That's the Graham Rogers guarantee. Not valid in Hawaii. Yes, or Alaska. Um, but thank you so much for tuning in. This was a um, I needed this. I hope you got something out of it, just like I did. I'm Graham Rogers, and uh, with me as always, Gerard Bauer. Take yeah. him out, baby boy. Yeah, and don't forget to uh, join us on Instagram every once in a while when we go live. Yes, and you can see clips from the show on Instagram. We're yeah. also on YouTube, yeah. if anybody's on YouTube and wants to see us. Yeah, we're, we're, we're around. But YouTube's kind of like an old person thing nowadays. Yeah. We gotta get on TikTok or something. Yeah, TikTok, baby. All right, thank you so much for tuning in, guys, and we'll uh, see you next time. Bye bye.